We don't have to go by the street rules, but the street rules gonna go gonna go, go to us. Because even even if you ain't got nothing to do with it, because people say, oh, if you ain't got nothing to do with it, shut your mouth, mind your business, you'll be all right. No. If your sister gets shot and you choose to go to the police, and you choose to go to the police, they coming to your house. They ain't no way, right? You stay in the hood, what you mean? I, ain't no way out of this. You feel what I'm saying? Ain't no way out. They tell you, oh, you ain't got nothing to do with it. You go, go to school, you all be all right. Lies. Lies, right? Lies. They gonna come right to you. Cause we done done it, right? We going to your house. We know where you live. So you can't just you can't right up. Exactly. So you eventually you be a part of it. To you know what I'm saying? To bring it home, I I wanna I wanna pivot, right? In the hood we do got groomers. I call game bangers groomers, cause like you said, twelve years old. This nigga don't know nothing. But he got an OG that's fifty years old, got three kids that don't listen to him, but he wants you to listen to him, right? Tell you things that oh you know he understood what he, he understood what he signed up for. He don't understand he's twelve years old, right? Groomer, right? A grown person talking to somebody else's kid about something that don't, he know nothing about, right? LGBTQ, right? They call them groomers. Little kids don't know nothing. Don't know what they're talking about, right? But, but these are kids being indoctrinated by adults about adult things and holding them accountable. Well, you can change your gender at, at, two, at, at three years old, four years old, right? You can get your private part chopped off. Right? Yeah. These are adults indoctrinating kids. How do we stop these adults from coming after our children? That's a good question. The only way you can stop them from coming home to your children, you got to protect your household the best way you can. It, the man, that's why it always starts with men. That's why they're trying to make all our men feminine. Because if the man ain't at home, mm -hmm. you can't hold the household together. And right. When you take the man and send him to prison, you can't hold the household together. When you take the man and get him killed by another man, you're not nobody. It's just going to be a repeated cycle, and that's what they've been loving for the. It, this is not new. Mm -hmm. This shit is like, bro. This shit is being seen over and over. And we talk about, oh yeah, it ain't right our people. So why are we not changing it? Right. Like why are we not like y'all marching about black lives? Like no, bro. <laughs> like what about them, them them kids and all that? Like nigga, that's getting fucked with by these gay people at the school and shit. Like nigga, we need to be marching versus these people. This that's that's where y'all need to be shooting them guns at. Yeah, He's super tough like that. That's where it needs to be going. Like that's where it needs to be going. Facts. People that's like, bro, they kids. Right, right, right. Y'all don't care about nothing. At least care about these kids, man. Right. They're the future. Right. That's all we got, bro. Right. Like, that's it. We all older at this point, bro. All we got is our kids, bro. Right. And that's how it's gonna go. That's right. So I know that's kind of. I know that's probably kind of a stretch. People will say that's kind of a stretch, man. You talking about game making? You talking about this? What I'm saying is that our children. Is the ones that is the next generation of everything. If they if they indoctrinate your kids with this game banging, it's gonna be more game banging. If they indoctrinate your kids with this LGBTQ stuff, it's gonna be more. You know what I'm saying? More more foolishness, more foolishness that you might not agree with as a, as a parent, right? So we must protect our children's minds. We have to protect their minds and what what they think and who and what who's around them. We have to understand that. Our children are under attack, which that means we are under attack, right? So this goes out to the kids that can't can't fend for themselves in the hood because we were those kids. We were taught at elementary we were swabbling over what we knew what clothes to wear. We knew what gang we knew what gang sign was what. We knew what not to say around what type of what type of street indoctrination, grooming. Oh, oh, you you you're gonna be from this gang, you're gonna be from this hood. Hang around older adults talking about gang shit, talking about all this other stuff that's in that's warping our minds to think like this. It's not it's not on accident. It's all purpose. Right? The next generation, when people that live in the hood, we already know who's gonna be game man. We already know who's gonna be from the hood, right? As a young kid, you, you already know which young kid's gonna be from the hood. The badass kid, oh he's gonna be from the hood. But it's the influences around him. The old older adults talking to him, grooming him. Oh, he bad. Oh, he, he gonna be from the hood. He probably got an uncle from the hood grooming him, right? To be a, to be a part of a gang. Same thing, bro. It's, it's the same thing. We must protect our kids from groomers. It's no different. We gotta protect their minds. What would you say to the youth? What would you say to the youth that that's trying to get out the hood but don't know a way out? I say try to reach out to somebody in their family that stay in the hood. Cool environment if they or make relationships with their family members that stay in cool areas and see if they can set up something to where they can move with them and then go out there for a semester or something see how they do and if they do good stay there and if you do bad go back like, mm. that's what I feel like they should have more options in just one spot so mm. that's that'll be my advice try to reach out to your family member that'll be better than reaching out to anybody else so it take like a village it take a village to to raise a kid man. Yep.
that makes sense. That makes sense. What do you say to a kid that that's troublesome, right? You was a bad kid. <laughs> you don't want to be told nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it was kind of hard to save you because shit. Like at that point, you just like, man, I, I, I don't want to listen to nobody. What do you say, kid? What do you say to to save a kid from going through what you went through? Who was like you at that age? At the age of of ten, eleven, twelve. What do you say to that kid that's troublesome? That don't see his life. But don't he don't even see till tomorrow. He just living. I say personally, young boys and young girls don't kick back, man, because it ain't worth it. Whatever you're going through, it's always like something in the future better. Like God put us all here for our own purpose and our own thing in life. You know what I mean? It might not show you show right then and there, but sometimes you got to sit and be patient. And patience is a virtue, and it's the hardest thing to wait for sometimes. But you got to, and at the end of the day, just keep grinding and stay out of trouble because once you get in trouble, everybody, your mom and parents can't save you. I'm talking to the young community. Your parents can't save you when you start getting in trouble. Mm. All right, guys, man, South Central. We had made another banger. Mud life in the building. Mud. South Central, tap in. We be really politicking while we whipping in the kitchen. God be my witness. At the age of 15, I was fighting my.